Okay, welcome to part uh, six of the Pi game, Mono game, and Love 2D uh, development of uh, the Kids Can Code's original series. So, this one is based on part seven, which is uh, score and drawing text, and part eight, which is sound effects and music. And today we're doing it with uh, Lua and Love 2D. So, I'll just play this so that you can see what we've got. So we've got the sound effects, we've got music playing in the background, we've got the explosions from meteors, and of course the shooting sound. I've also got the word debug mode showing down here in yellow, and the score up there, you just heard an explosion as I was speaking. So that's what we'll be doing today, adding both the sounds and the score. Um, first thing before we go on to showing you anything else is you'll notice this time it actually starts on this screen. Uh, this is something I've been struggling with for the past few, is if I run it in Love2D or Monogame, I, it opens on my main screen and then I have a devil of a job trying to drag it across to show you what's happening. So um, I've been doing some investigating to find out how to do it and it's actually very simple. Let me just increase the size. So in Love 2D, uh, if you remember we've got this um, conf.lua which sets the screen height and width, uh, so that remains the same. But on the load function here, I've done this new line and it's love.window.setMode the width and height I don't want to change, so I've left those as they were specified in the shared folder. But I've now added this table, the, um, it's just a little bit grey here so it doesn't show up too well. Let me just increase that font a little bit further. You can see I've got the open curly bracket here of a table and inside I've put display equals two and that's done the job. It now displays on the second monitor so it's extremely easy in Love 2D to, to choose which monitor. Uh, if you've not already seen the Pi Game version, in order to do it on Pi Game, all I have to do is to move this entire window to whichever screen I want it to display on and hit the play button, and it will then display on the same screen as the wing uh, is. So there you go, that's one sorted. So the um, sounds uh, we're using, I've put them in my um, distribution here at the beginning at the top of the where all the episodes are listed there's some sounds in here uh, the only ones in here are ones that I've either created myself using um, BFXR or that I found on open game art and I'm, con I'm not concerned about copyright issues perhaps being involved I think they're all perfectly okay if there's anything you see there that shouldn't be there please let me know and I will remove it immediately. So we've got a few simple sound effects and the um, the um, background music is uh, down here and again I'll put the same link in the description. So let's go back to the code. Oh no sorry before I do that BFXR is now um, because it's Adobe Flash based you can't kind of online mix and, and produce the uh, sound effects now, but you can download it for both Windows and Mac, so uh, that's uh, just a little extra something they might uh, be useful. Right, so how do we get these sounds loaded in? Let me just reduce the volume a little bit there. So the extra thing we've got in our list of class variables at the top here. We had sprites before, we've now got a local table of sounds. So just sounds equals an empty table. Then uh, in the load function down here, we've had the load images last time, now we've got a load audio. So let's go through the load audio. So what this is doing is our empty sounds table we're now adding one called shoot and we're giving it the uh, source, the love.audio new source of that um, particular 
file from the sound or SND folder here. There's the sound folder, those are the sound effects. So we're just kind of pointing it to that's where they are. Now this word static uh, is the way that Love determines between a sound effect and a streaming sound. So in Pygame you had to use Pygame mix some music I believe for anything streaming. Here it treats audio as all the same except you specify if it's static that's loaded into memory and is instantly available to be played. If it's a background music you load it in as a stream and then it plays it in that way. But otherwise they're loaded in in exactly the same fashion. So we've got uh, sound effects that we are uh, using here all loaded in at once. Now I found they were quite loud uh, in by default um, and so by experimenting I found that setting the volume of them all to 0.2 makes it quite tolerable and even better is to set the background to 0.1. So what I've done is as this is a table containing all the sounds I've just used a simple um, lower pairs loop so this is a special kind of a uh, loop that's a uh, for loop in Lua that goes through the pairs of a table so it will take sounds shoot sounds shield etc etc so the KV the K is the key and V is the actual value so the V here of the pairs of sounds will take sounds dot shoot or shield or power or whatever and it will set the volume of that sound to 0.2 including of course sounds dot background but I want that even lower so separately I've then said okay sounds dot background set volume to 0 0.1 so that it's even lower volume so that gets all the sounds loaded up so how do we use them right uh, the first one that I'll show you is the shoot there it is so there's our sounds dot shoot let's increase the font a bit so as before we um, uh, check to see whether we can fire a bullet uh, and this time what we've done is to put the love.audio.stop the shoot sounds. Uh, you could if you wanted to um, stop that um, so that it becomes continuous. If I just hash that out, start this up and then I'll show you. Okay, so we've got a continuous stream of sounds there. Let's undo that and we'll do it again. As you can see, we've now got a more continuous sound so that you hear the beginning of the start of each firing of your bullet. You choose whichever you like best. So I stop the audio first, I then add a bullet to the table and then once it's been added and ready to go then we start the sounds dot shoot there and I think that sounds better so I've done the same technique in both the Pi game and mono game because it, it I think it sounds better to have that continuous stream where you artificially stop the sound before you play it again so that's the shoot sound uh, in the check mob bullet conditions here again we're doing something similar if we've destroyed a mob then the first thing to do is stop the shooting sound. Uh, we're then going to increase the score based on the radius of the circle of the mob that we're hitting so that um, we can increase the score by an amount depending on how big or how small the uh, the mob is. So that's why I've used math.floor just to keep it as a integer value so the score will always be an integer and then we're increasing that. Uh, then we're playing one of two sounds. So if the radius of the circle is uh, small, less than 15, then it plays sounds type 1. Otherwise it plays sounds type 2. Now of course you could increase this and have maybe three or four explosion sounds and, and do a more accurate determination of what kind of sound you want to play on the size of the meteor but for demonstration purposes this works perfectly. In the Pi game version they were just randomly chosen I believe. I don't think it was set depending on the radius but this just shows you how uh, 
that the sound is, is chosen depending on the radius. So that's how the sound is played there. I'll just check whether we've got any in. Yes, in this one, um, checking the mob and player collisions, um, I've actually put in a sound effect for the um, player being hit. So if I get hit, it will play the sound of the player dying. I just, uh, I would need to, I think that would be okay. Yep, let's do that. Let's, uh, let's run that and see if we can hear that happening. There you go. Yes, you heard the explosion. Now the game's not quitting because I'm in debug mode. And so uh, the, 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 this bit up here, which is checking, uh, is checking two things. So when, when a mob hits the player, it plays this sound and then it sets the player alive to false. So we've now got, I believe this was a new thing we put in the player class. Let's just control plus that one. Yeah, so we've got this new value in here player.alive is true. So if we are hit, go back to the main one here, if we are hit by a mob, what we do is set the player alive to false, but don't instantly quit the game. We then play this die sound, which was the kind of rumble that you, that you heard as an explosion. Then the next time that this is updated, remember this is checked every 60 frames a second. So the next update cycle, it says if the player is alive, then we check the player's keyboard state and carry on as normal. As normal. But if the player is marked as dead, if the sound that we have uh, started, which is the die sound, is playing, then, um, it, sorry, if it's not playing, that's why we've got this not here. So while the die sound is playing, this will be ignored and you'll continue to hear that explosion sound. But as soon as it has stopped playing, unless you're, uh, if you're in debug mode, then it, it just sits there like it did a moment ago. Otherwise, the game will then pass and you'll die. So let me just demonstrate again by this time changing the debug to false. And this time what should happen, I will get hit almost straight away. But um, the sound will go before the game quits. Let's save that. Right, here we go, about to die. There we go. So you heard the explosion. But if I hadn't had this delay that's been introduced by using this process here of setting the player alive to false, then as you go around, you're checking, is the player still alive? If it is, uh, that means that the, um, the player has been hit, but it will not die until the sound of the explosion has finished. So that, that's quite a neat little way of doing it. After that, that's it. You're done. Quit. You're dead. Your, your explosion has finished. So that was how that sound is there. Now coming down to the drawing. This piece line here uh, in the draw function, this draws the text of the score at size 24 and the shared width uh, over 2 divided by 10 so that that draws it in the centre of the window 10 pixels from the top. Then if we're in debug mode then we draw the text in um, size 18, 10 pixels in at the height minus 24 on the left side in yellow so that draws it at the bottom of the screen. Now the draw text method itself is in shared so let me show you that. Again we'll increase the font. So this is the shared uh, uh, class. We've got two new things now. We've got two things here. We've got the font name and we've got the fonts themselves. Um, now what I did to get this font name, again, I did not want to put the font into the repository in case there were copyright issues. You can find fonts online or you can look in your own 
fonts folder in the operating system you are in. So if you find this one was Arial Narrow, which is why it's Arial N. So this came from my fonts folder. I simply copied it and put it in this folder here called Font. But as I say, I'm not going to put this in the repository. It's easy enough for you to find a font, or you might find something else that you prefer. So the font name is being given there as font, because it's in the font folder, slash Arial N dot TTF. Now the fonts table here has been set up. So we've got fonts in the shared and I've set up a series of sizes and you use this love.graphics new font and then you give it a name which I've just done which is this S font name here and then a size so I decided to create several sizes which might be useful I don't think any, they're all being used maybe only some of them are but it's useful to have a table of various sizes so you can use them. So that's all again done in the shared folder. We've got this table of different size fonts which is a totally different way to what Pygame does it. And then we've got this method now inside our static class, the draw text. So you would call it by saying shared.drawText as you saw uh, a moment ago and then it will draw the text, the size you specify, the x, y coordinates the alignment and the color. So it uses the love graphics set font and it will choose the one that you have specified with your size here. So it'll, if you said I want size 18 then uh, uh, size 18 is, is there and that will supply it. Uh, we give it the white color unless you have chosen something different. Uh, then if we haven't specified an alignment um, sorry if we have specified an alignment um, it, if it's center then it will set it to center and then we're uh, because this is the US way of doing it and then we use the love.graphics.printf which is a special function in love.graphics where we give it the text the X and Y coordinates the width that we want to do now the alignment in the love 2d itself has to have the word center spelt US style or left or right so that's why I've said if the align has been put as center spelt UK then we are changing it to the US spelling so that it fits in with love 2d method of doing things so if we have not given a, an alignment then it will just use the print one here so that we're not specifying anything special about it we're just doing love.graphics print uh, just where it is so that gives us our two options for drawing the text so that's how that one works so let's go back to here so um, sc score 24 and the debug mode in size 18 so of course you can change those if you wish in yellow you could change the color of this you could change the alignment of this there's all kinds of stuff you can do with it so that covers the the text part of it I think that's it now we've covered the audio and the text yep okay so the next one along is uh, monogame